This pie chart shows where people get the news from. The largest number, 40%, get the news from the television, but this is closely followed by newspapers, which are used by 36%. It seems surprising that the internet comes third, with only 15% of people getting the news from there. Finally, only 9% get the news from other sources. This graph shows the unemployment rate amongst people of different ages from 1992 to 2010. The rates for people aged 16 to 17 were the highest over the whole period, reaching 45 percent in 2009 and 2010. Between 1992 and 1995, the unemployment level for those aged 18 to 20 was about 25 percent. Then dropped below 20 percent until 2008, when they continued to rise, reaching 27 to 28 percent in 2010. The levels of unemployment for those aged between 21 to 24, both with and without a degree, followed a similar pattern, beginning at about 15 percent in 1992. And ending at about twelve percent and fourteen percent, respectively, in two thousand and ten. But apart from a period from about nineteen ninety three to six, the level of unemployment was higher for those without a degree. This bar graph shows how many tons of carbon dioxide were emitted by residents in various places. The lowest figure is for London, where only about six tons were emitted by each resident. The northeast was by far the worst, with about twelve tons of CO2 emissions per resident. It was followed by Yorkshire and the Humber, with approximately 9.5 tons per resident. Residents of all other regions emitted between about seven and eight tons of CO2 in 2008.
This bar graph shows the growth in the number of households with internet access over the four-year period from 2006 to 2009. Growth has been fairly steady over the period shown, at around 4 or 5 percent each year. According to the graph, about 70 percent of households had internet access by 2009. This compares to only about 57 percent in 2006. Two things are illustrated by this graph, which covers a 20-year period, running from 1989 until 2009. The number of overseas visitors to the UK and the number of UK residents going abroad. Both show steady growth until about 2008, although there was a slight dip in the number of overseas visitors to the UK between 2001 and 2002. In 2008, both types of travel dropped, with a particularly sharp decrease in the number of UK residents going abroad. Generally, throughout this period, more people from the UK went abroad than there were visitors to the UK. This demographic graph breaks down the estimated population of the UK in 2010 by age and gender. The largest age group consists of men and women in their early 40s. Other large age groups in both sexes are the 20 to 30 age group and the early 60s. Up until the 70s, the numbers of men and women remain fairly equal, but then in old age, women outnumber men. It seems surprising that there are not more children and young people in the UK population today.
This pie chart shows how many hours a year people spend, on average, visiting their local doctor in England. At 35 hours a year, people in the southeast spend the largest amount of time, with the east not far behind at 33 hours a year. People in the northeast and the northwest, at 13 and 15 hours respectively, spend the least time with their local doctor. People in the west visit their doctor for 17 hours a year, while the figure for the southwest is 20 hours. This chart shows how many students, on average, are late for college on each day of the working week. It is noticeable, but not surprising, that Monday is the day when the largest number of students is late, as many as 30. Friday has the second largest number of late students, with an average of about 17. Wednesday follows with about 15 latecomers. Tuesdays and Thursdays are roughly the same. With the fewest late arrivals, numbering about ten. This table compares how males and females over age 16 use their time doing various things each day. It covers many kinds of activities, including how much time they spend sleeping, eating, and watching TV. One striking difference is that men have about five and a quarter hours leisure time, whereas women have about half an hour less than this. The biggest difference is time spent doing housework. Women spend three hours a day doing housework. While men spend just under half that amount, otherwise there is not much difference between the time males and females spend on other activities.
This graph compares the proportion of households and businesses in the UK with internet access and broadband connection to those in the rest of the European Union. It shows that the UK is about 10% above the EU average for internet access at home. Just over 30% of households in the EU have a broadband connection, while the UK is 12% above the EU average. For businesses, there is less difference. In fact, internet access is equal in both the UK and EU at more than 90%, while for broadband connections, the UK is only slightly higher. The chart shows population change in the 12 years from 1998 to 2010. It shows both natural change, which I assume means births and deaths, and net migration, and how these contribute to population growth. Between 1998 and 2002, there was a decline in growth due to natural change. But after that, there was a steady rise during the rest of the period, peaking at an increase of just under 250,000. Figures for net migration peaked in 2005 at over 250,000, then fell to under 200,000 in 2009, before picking up again to reach about 225,000 in 2010. In general, the population rose over the period covered. This pie chart shows how much time students spend reading various types of text. It is surprising to see that given that they are students, only 7% of reading time is spent on reference books. 15% of their time is spent reading on the internet. Newspapers take up the largest portion of students' reading time at 32%, closely followed by fiction at 26%. The third most popular kind of reading matter is magazines, which take up 20% of students' reading time.
This graph shows how popular several new EU member states and other parts of the world have become among holidaymakers during the period 2003 to 2007. By far the greatest increase has been in visitors to Latvia, a number which grew by more than 1,100% during this time period. Slovakia and Poland showed the next largest increases, while China and Israel were at the bottom, showing a growth of about 160%. This graph shows that there has been a steady decline in the readership of national daily newspapers in Britain during the period 1978 to 2009. The percentage of readers has declined by about 30%, which is roughly a fall in readership of 10% every 10 years. In the 10 years covered by the graph, overall sickness absence has fallen, though it remained higher in the public sector than in the private sector. In 2000, both private and public sector worker levels were above 3%, with public sector workers at a high of about 3.7 or 3.8% and private sector workers at about 3.2%. By the end of 2010, just above 3% of public sector employees were absent from work, compared with only slightly more than 2% of private sector employees. The gap between the two sectors was at its widest in the final quarter of 2008. So, on average, sickness rates are higher in the public than the private sector.
This graph shows e-security problems faced by businesses in the UK in 2001, 2003 and 2005. Virus infections and disruptive software remain the biggest problems in all the years covered, with 35% of businesses having such incidents in 2005 compared to 41% in 2001 and 50% in 2003. The next most common type of problem was staff misuse of information systems, rising from about 12% in 2001 to about 22% in 2003 and 21% in 2005. Unauthorised access by outsiders remained constant in 2003 and 2005 at about 16%, up on 2001's 13%. Finally, theft or fraud involving computers was at its highest in 2003, at about 12%, having risen from 6% in 2001 and then dropping to 8% in 2005. The graph compares expenditure per household between the countries of the UK and some specific regions of England. England as a whole is just above the average, while Northern Ireland, Scotland and Wales spend less than the average. Wales spends the lowest at almost 15% below the average, in contrast to the capital, London, at over 15% above the national average, making it the biggest spender. Apart from London, South East and East England, the rest of the country spend below average. The picture shows a view of a city, possibly taken from a hill or a very tall building. In the foreground, there are many small, low buildings. It might be a slum area where very poor people live. In the background, you can see skyscrapers, which may house wealthier people, or it may be a business district. It could be in South America, but could be anywhere, really where poor people come to the cities looking for work and a better life.
This shows the various means that can be used to prevent unwanted material on computers and the percentage of people who use them. By far the most common method used, by about 23% of people, was putting blocks or filters on their email accounts. About 19% did the same for their internet browser or search engine, while about 10% use passwords. Other methods favored by less than 10% include never giving out personal details and either monitoring children's use of the internet or putting locks on certain sites. This graph shows the pump price for unleaded petrol and diesel in the UK from 1999 until 2008. The first thing to notice is that the line for diesel is always higher than for premium unleaded, which means it's generally more expensive. The other thing to notice is that the price for both fuels roughly doubled from 1999 to 2008, going from about 62 or 63 pence a litre to more than 120 pence a litre in the case of diesel. Prices for both seemed to peak in 2008, but fell dramatically later that same year, diesel ending on a price of 100 pence per litre and petrol on a price of about 90 pence per litre. The picture shows a number of wooden houses on the bank of a river or lake. At first I thought no one could live there because the houses don't look very sturdy, but then I noticed the clothes hanging out to dry. Obviously the people who live there must be quite poor. There are boats in the picture which might be used for fishing or for transport. The trees look a bit like palm trees, so maybe this is somewhere tropical.
This pie chart illustrates the various means of transport people who live outside the city use to get to work by percentage. The largest number of commuters, just over 30%, use the train, while 27% travel by car. Surprisingly, very few people use only the bus or the underground, so most bus and underground users must be included in the 29% who use more than one form of transport to get to work. This graph shows projected sales of soft drinks for the Morgan Drinks Company in millions per year from 2018 to 2024. The graph shows that the company expects to sell 20 million bottles of still water in 2018, rising to over 30 million by 2024. Fizzy water, on the other hand, will increase from 30 million bottles to about 38 million bottles in 2020 and then fall gradually. Sales of fruit drinks will remain stable at around 45 million bottles a year. The map shows which parts of the world are most densely forested and shows two types of forest, evergreen and deciduous. The most densely forested area is in South America. At about the same latitude, there are thick forests in parts of Africa. I imagine in both these cases, they are tropical rainforests. Central America and the northern parts of Canada are also densely forested, as are the northern parts of Europe and Asia, from Scandinavia and across Siberia to Mongolia. In the east, parts of China and Indonesia show the most forested areas.